What sons of they're gonna be out there. It Think says in the description. It says in the description it's Mighty Ducks. So if they yeah, come do they, here, do they realize we're being yeah. serious? Do they know we're being serious? They're like, they're like, they're gonna do like a wrestling version of Mighty Ducks. <laughs> like, who who would play each actor? Yeah. And it would literally just be Mighty Ducks. Tremendous. No, we're just talking Mighty Ducks. So, I mean, if they don't realize this, then that's all them. I meant to check the audio, and you know what? They might not be able to hear anything. Joseph, say something. Al Holford. SP3, say something. Kobe. Jensen, say something. Quack, quack, quack. Okay. Audio should be good. We're good. It doesn't seem like nice. there's an echo or anything. So We should have we should have went like this. Like, SP3, New York City. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Steven Jensen, Atlanta, Georgia. This is a deep cut, man. I actually understood that reference. I thought that was inside. I'm really proud of myself. Okay. How is it? It's, it's in the movie. Yeah. Oh, we're live right now. Yeah, we're live. Yeah, we're live. <laughs> though. I told you we were live. I didn't realize you hit the button. Yeah, yeah I said when go. we were live, we were live. Good. <laughs> go, guys. Anyone who's in here right now, welcome. This is going to be the best podcast of all time. This is. This is the best thing on a wrestling Twitch that's ever happened. Talking about Mighty Ducks. The, gra- the greatest sports film of all time. And that's my first hot take. Yes. Oh best, best trilogy wow. of all time. I think. Yes. Wow. So yes. we have Star best Wars trilogy time. and best sports film of all time. Mm. Which, yeah. which one's a hotter take? The trilogy one. Yeah, so the right? trilogy <laughs> one's got to be the hotter take here. It, it is, though. It is the best trilogy. But it, I, I understand like people like Star Wars and stuff like that. It's whatever. I understand people like Star Wars, but it ain't shit compared to the Mighty Ducks. No. It, it's, no. true. it's true. Like, who would win in a fight? Gordon Bombay or Luke Skywalker? I mean, I mean who has I'll a lightsaber? Bombay, I'll, I'll yeah, nine, Bombay I'll has think... a hockey stick and miracles. <laughs> I'll take nine-year-old Bombay over, over little Luke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh I agree. God. 100%. To be fair though, Bombay does get the shit kicked out of him by the fo- the heel coach in the second film. I know that. <laughs> I remember that. That was a penalty though. It was definitely juicing for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, but Bombay at nine years old scored 198 goals. Like you know, in like ten games. Like how the fuck did he do that? Can he fight That's though? Like can he fight? We're talking about a fight here. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he'd I kick don't... Luke Skywalker's ass in a hockey game, but we're talking about a fight. Uh, Luke is a so bitch. I mean, I will say that, but I mean, <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta go like Fulton. I think Fulton w- would oh, kick oh. his ass. Like, yeah, here's where the hot takes come in. <laughs> Portman, Fulton's Portman. a fake tough guy, bro. He's a fake. <laughs> oh, tough. faked up Portman. Like, yeah. Portman, you man. get inside, man. You can see it. You can see it in the face. In the second movie, where the other big kid comes in, it's like, oh, Fulton ain't shit. He's nothing. He's yeah, like, that okay. just me. Portman. Portman can take yeah. Luke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Portman was also, like, he was, like, significantly larger than the rest of those. Yes. Like, he was, like, a probably, like, a grown man. I love when they do that in movies and shows sometimes. Like, if you ever go back and watch, like, Grease nowadays, you realize, like, the entire cast is, like, 40-year-old men and women that are playing high schoolers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He's, he's the actual outlier in it, and it's tremendous. <laughs> he is simply built different, put it that way, right? Yes. Yeah, he was built different. Built different. The first, the first line about him is, this guy's a teenager? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's the first line ever uttered about Portman. And then it's like, yeah, he, the hormones is the reason, right? He's like, <laughs> hormones, you're going to need him against Iceland. <laughs> All right, you need enforcers at this level. Folks, we are four minutes into this program, and it is already <laughs> outrageous. I have no idea how we get this to be on track, what we talk about. I don't know. I'm just here as a viewer that's on air, basically. I'm, I'm here to enjoy the conversation. I'll throw in a take. Here and there, I know that my peers are very excited for this one. If you are less excited as someone that has not seen the My Ducks nor cares about them, I don't know how to sell you on the podcast. <laughs> I'm Just try your best to enjoy the room. I feel That's like, what I'm going to do. I feel like you were the one who started this podcast, Joseph, because you admitted to watching Game Changers, I think, when we had SB3 on. And we were like, yeah, oh, yeah. we should do... Me. We should. What does that mean? I don't know. I, did, I would not take you for somebody who's going to watch Game Changers. Yeah. I, I watch a lot of shit. I watch wrestling, you know. It's just, it's True, like, but yeah. like, have you ever watched like a period of hockey in your life? No. Okay. Never I think so. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I I enjoy hockey like going live, but I don't follow it like like during the season and stuff. Oh, I hate. But hockey. I love these movies. It's like it's like you know, hockey definitely wasn't. I probably played every sport except for hockey growing up. You know what I mean? But like these movies were just good. 
Yeah, I, I played like more like gym hockey and street hockey, and yes. I never I never really followed the sport, but I followed Mighty Ducks like <laughs> intensely. Like I yes. love Mighty Ducks. Like there's I I I I am close to getting on your side, Stephen, and saying it's the best trilogy ever. I think by the end of this podcast, I'm gonna be full on with you. Yeah, oh dude. I mean, God. they're. they're one of my favorite feelings in the world was like when I was a kid, because my family is from like Minnesota, North Dakota, like that, that area. And so I've been to the Mall of America a handful of times. And every time I go, I'm like, man, I wish I could skate through the Mall of America like the Mighty Ducks did in the second movie. That'd be so awesome. And they, when they get Team USA all put together, yes. man, it was awesome. So yeah, guys, this is going to be, I mean, I, I need to know in the chat also, like we got people calling us cake eaters. You know, Northwood, you can go, uh, <laughs> you know, shove it, all right? I, and, uh, that's a good shout. Know. The cake eater is a good shout. I'm the, opposite, cake eaters. I'm the opposite of a cake eater. I'm like I'm like in the third film when uh the 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 varsity team calls them white trash. And I'm like what? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm Russ. I'm Russ Tyler. Oh yeah, you gotta knuckle puck him in the face. <laughs> Dude, and no, Northwood, for like for real, though, thanks for being in here. I'm just kidding, obviously. And anyone who's in here, I, I appreciate anyone even even sitting through what you're about to listen to. Um, if you are if you haven't seen the Mighty Ducks Game Changers or the trilogy, I mean, I'd recommend either tuning. I mean, I, we want to keep the viewers, but like this is going to be just nothing. Uh, just listen to us so. banter. All right, Jensen, I have a, I have a, this is all I'm going to start this. Steven Jensen, you're a madman because you stay up until 3 a.m. For the new Game Changers episode. Every episode. Oh, my God. What goes through your mind when you just decide, yeah, this is so compelling and so must-watch that I got to stay up until 3 a.m. to watch these new episodes? Jeremy, not only did I watch each episode when it dropped at 3 in the morning, there were multiple weeks where I watched it more than once before I fell asleep. So, <laughs> so we're talking, like, I was up at, like, 4 or 5 in the morning some of these nights, um... And as you know, every now and then I'd be doing my show with Doug over on the RVD Keto for Life channel. So I go right from that over to over to Game Changers pretty much because we talk so late in the middle of the night. So I was already usually awake, and then I would just keep it going, man. Keep it going. Get a couple of brewskis, get, get them out of the fridge, and just hang out and watch some, watch some Mighty Ducks, man. What is the sort of spoiler risk on an episode of Mighty Ducks Game <laughs> yeah. You know, because like me, I there are some things that I am very mostly professional wrestling because I have to talk about it, right? So I'm very alert about like I need to watch this before someone can ruin it for me. Yeah. Now the way you explained it sounded a lot more normal than the way Jeremy framed it to me, which is that you just had enough to do on the sitting. I now understand you were doing something, and then you was like, okay, so like I get that. But this yeah. imagine you wasn't doing the show with Doug, and you just went straight. Like, how likely would it be that if you didn't watch the show at 3 a.m., someone would spoil it for you? I need to know. <laughs> Like, what's the risk of this? Because someone going to text oh. you that something happened in the game changes? I'm sure. Yes, yes, that is the truth, uh, Joe. I'm very glad that you've asked that question because <laughs> so so no, I if, if I because I I tend to I tend to go to sleep fairly late into the like kind of late night early morning anyways, and most of the people that I know wake up way earlier than I do. So sometimes I would wake up to texts that were like dude og mighty ducks and then and i'm like i'm glad that i watched it in the middle of the night because i would have woke up and and that so i actually joe believe it or not enough people know that i i like this so much that like people are hitting me up about it so um now that's not to say i was doing it anyways i wasn't really concerned about the spoiler aspect i would have done it anyways but um but yes i i did have to avoid spoilers but it was really great because like the the hardcore fans would be awake so i'd, I'd search hashtag the mighty ducks game changers i'm like <laughs> 3 30 a.m and it'd be like 10 other people every week that are also like oh man i can't believe this just happened and i'm like there there's my new best friends right there the ashley rose you sold me on this as being a good way to consume game changes second season brother i'm right there with you we'll be doing it be like 8 a.m for me be well, what time is it for you over there yeah. going, right? I, I, 3 a.m for you i assume would be like 8 a.m it's like the morning it's perfect yeah okay yeah. Oh, oh, we'll do it i know oh, terrible yeah, no, for real, that'd be that'd be awesome. Second season, well, we can uh, we can we can uh, give our thoughts at the same time on this stuff. There you go. It's been free. Did you start until three in the morning to watch Game Changers, or did you just watch it like at a normal time? I don't know. I'm I'm intrigued. Well, I, every Friday morning, that was like my first my first thing that I watched when I woke up. I was like, oh, it's Friday. Let me turn on Game Changers, and it was a nice little it was a nice little transition because I did uh, reviews for. 
um what was it the falcon and the winter soldier on my friend's uh youtube channel so it was like i would tell him he was like oh when you want to do it i was like whatever time i'm done with game changers then we can watch falcon and the winter soldier like game changers was more important to me than than falcon and winter soldier true fan, true fan. i was i was doing a, a youtube show on it ironically enough Wow, this is off to an incredible start, <laughs> Jeremy. Do you have any way to take this thing? Because I'm already stalled here. Coming up, I I would here. I would watch it when I got around to it. Fortunately, nobody spoiled it for me. Because you know Fridays, I would have liked to watch it on Fridays, but I got to get up and listen to Talk Is Jericho, listen to you know a Sonny Ono interview or something like that. Another Nick Aldis interview. This is the stuff that I do on my Fridays. Uh, so I would usually watch it on, on the weekend. Um, but nobody spoiled it. Thank God. Thank God that yeah. you know everyone was respectful enough to where they weren't spoiling the show for me. I do appreciate it, that. It took everything in my power not to during our watch along for <laughs> Impact. Like, <laughs> like I'm just sitting there with you for like two hours straight and like just so badly want to be because I would all, I always give it a shout out at the end of the show. Like we'd be signing off and I'd be like, make sure everyone watches Game <laughs> Changers today. <laughs> I do oh, think cool. I was an episode two or behind when I when I joined you guys, but there was like in the early on episodes, like we we would talk about it instead of watching Impact because I mean why wouldn't we talk about Game Changers instead of watching Impact? Fair. Yeah. I, I think we should we should try and go. I think mean, we should try and bring some order to this at some point. But I'm too intrigued by the current path for almost Stephen Jensen to stop, so I'm going to keep going. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now. Here's the thing folks know about me, is I watch no wrestling. I don't believe in wrestling. I'm going to try and end it very soon. <laughs> Steven Jensen is someone that really does consume a lot of pro wrestling, and I respect that, right? Like, you cover a lot of shit, and that's hard to do, man. So I have a very simple question, and it's one that, in my view, is sort of the ultimate test of lunacy in one way. I don't know if it's the right answer. It's just a one degree of insane. Okay, so here's what I'm going to ask you. You can preserve the Mighty Ducks movies as well as Game Changers Season 1, and there will be a new season every year for the rest of eternity. But to do that, you have to erase every professional wrestling match you've ever enjoyed. Okay? Oh, or God. you can keep those wrestling matches, and the Mighty Ducks, it's gone. It's out of here. No more Mighty Ducks to be seen ever again. I know it's difficult, Stephen, but I want to stress again, there's no right answer, because they're both right. of these things. Are, you know, it's, it's Mighty Ducks and Pro Wrestling. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? I as as hard as it is for me to, to say this and admit this like because there's just so much more volume of pro wrestling over the years of my lifetime like i have way too many of my my childhood and teenage memories attached to to pro wrestling like the mighty ducks is like my whole childhood because there was three movies in a pretty short time span but yeah. but there's been there's just too many I, pro wrestling means too much to me overall that i just i just couldn't i couldn't uh make that decision but I, i'd have to go with the pro i'd have to go with the pro wrestling that's a tough one man it really is yeah, because you'd have to rewatch the films an awful lot to make up the difference in quantity, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, I'm glad we settled. <laughs> question, Coming in with the, I mean, uh, SB3. Did you think the game change? So game changers gets announced. I think all of us who who grew up on the movies were excited. Did you think it lived up to the hype and the nostalgia and followed through on what the movies were all about? I was on the fence until maybe like episode five or six once we got the og reunion i was like okay yeah they got me they got me like really hook line and seeker like the first couple of episodes i'm like okay this is nice okay we got gordon bombay but it doesn't feel like the mighty ducks yet and then like that og episode it really took it home and it made me remember the fact that this is this is just gordon bombay going back to uh, mighty ducks one like, this yes. is just him reverting back to his old self of hating hockey, having resentment. Once we we learned the story of how he got back to this point, that's when I was like, okay, I'm really feeling this. I am I feel the nostalgia feelings with this. So that's where I was at. Jensen? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. I, I know exactly how you feel. And, and my thing is most reboots, like 99.9% .9 of the time, I really don't like. So, like... Even even down to like the Jay and Silent Bob re uh, Jay and Silent Bob uh, reboot they recently did like I didn't even like that and like some of my favorite some of my favorite movies are like Mallrats and Clerks and stuff and, like I love that series and like even I was like damn they're ruining it with this reboot like and, 
<laughs> and, and so like and they've done that with like everything it feels like so when they announced the mighty ducks i was like oh shit they're gonna ruin my whole childhood with this thing like this is gonna be so bad and then i saw the trailer and i was like oh they actually got emilio estevez okay like that i don't think he'd come and do this if it was gonna suck because he, he's very picky about the roles he he takes nowadays so like i was like okay that's pretty promising he's gonna be a part of this and I was kind of with you, like, I was kind of on the fence for a couple episodes. I was going to stick with it either way, but yeah. I was like, I could see where, I, we, we'll get to the ending of the series later, but, like, the key things that happen, I was, I started to call probably in episode three or four, I was like, oh, if this is the route they go with this, though, and this is the ending we get, ve- very similar to professional wrestling, and this is, like, the difference for me between, like, WWE and AEW, in WWE, like, a lot of the time, I think the writers have the same exact ideas all the fans do, and then they just do stuff to swerve people because they think, like, just don't do... In AEW, they just, like, do the, what makes sense most of the time, and it's, like, long-term yeah. stories. And So that's how I was, how I feel. is like, you can do the predictable thing. And that's what I think Mighty Ducks did. There was a lot of predictability throughout the series, but it all made sense. So, like, I, I loved it. So, um, but yes, I was... In, the, that, that one episode with the OG Ducks, though, that really did. I think that brought a lot of interest to the series because I think a lot of people weren't watching it. And then they found out that happened and then they jumped in. Yeah. Joseph. I remember like, I would go to like my uh, group chat and I was talking about the Mighty Ducks film before the series started. And when I told people, oh, they got the OG reunion, like literally people were like hitting me up like, OK, should I start at episode one or should I just go to the OG reunion episode? I was like, no, start at episode one. You need the slow build up to it. You need to understand how we got to this point. So I like it. And I will say they they did they did the swerve at the end the right way. Yes. That's the right way to do a wrestling swerve where I I thought I knew how it was going to end and then they swerved it and did it the right way. So I, I will give it that. Yes, you're right. There is the swerve before what eventually we get to. You're totally right about that. Um, yeah. We ask away. What other questions you got? Because I got, I, got, I got plenty to talk about. <laughs> Joseph, I do have a question for you because you didn't watch the you didn't watch the movies growing up, did you? I did. No, I did. OK, so here's what happened, guys. Hello. Um, I fear of outing myself here as the sort of villain of the program. I I saw the films because my brothers were big fans. I did not watch them again though. Like I, you know, I, they're not saying I've seen them for a long, long time. And then uh, maybe a month or so ago, you you remember because SP3 was your birthday show. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was that show. Yeah. Um, you know, my brother goes there doing this. They got this show on Disney Plus, so I binged it because I just, you know, it's, I like watching those kind of things. They're wacky, they're light, right? You can do other stuff. You, it wasn't the event for, for me that it appeared to have been for you guys, which I respect. It wasn't. Like when, so, for example, to give you some perspective, when the older team came in, I had no idea any of those people. No, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> the only guy that I remembered from the originals was Goldberg, uh, mm. which, to be correct, Tope Sursida said WCW Goldberg or my Ducks Goldberg, <laughs> which is very good. I remembered the Goldberg, man. I didn't Because you guys remember, you, you were talking about like who were the best players, right? I had no clue what you were talking about. Yeah. I have since rewatched the films to be a professional. And <laughs> for the sake of respecting everyone's enjoyment and grin, I will not give my opinions on those films because I did watch them effectively as an adult without any nostalgia, which I would recommend, probably not the best play, to be honest with you. If you don't have nostalgia for it, you probably won't love it the same way. But that's fine. At least I know what players you're talking about now when you talk about them. So please pr- please proceed with your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> I, I was I was more like amped because I remember when I first got Disney Plus, those are immediately the first movies that I looked up and it literally told me you had to wait like a whole year before they even were available on Disney Plus. So I was literally really? like biting biting my nails waiting for these movies <laughs> to get back up. So before they even announced Game Changers, I watched all three films, you know, I'm I'm sitting here watching it. My 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 girl is just like, "What are you doing? Like, why are you watching? Why are you watching this?" I was like, "This is my childhood. This is what I this is what I believe." Like, I I we we both watched uh, Dawson's Creek and I was like, "That's not Pacey. This is Charlie Conway. This is Charlie Conway now." Like, I've totally reverted back. I'm reverting back to my childhood and this is what he is. He's number 96. He's the captain. This is what it is, but I was really looking forward to these films coming on Disney Plus. And then when the announcement came for Game Changers, I remember like I first saw the the trailer and I was like, oh my god, for real? For real? I got hyped. Like I this was that was the first time I really got very much like amped for a series to 
a premiere on on Disney Plus more than like Mandalorian, more than Falcon and Winter Soldier, more than WandaVision. Mighty Ducks Game Changers was that for me. Hell yeah! <laughs> with with the with the show, someone mentioned it. It was like a callback to essentially the original film. Bombay's out of hockey. He hates it. She can't stand it. He gets this group of ragtag kids, right? And the 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 don't bothers. He gets this group. The mom is. She wants everyone to have a chance. She's one of those moms. Look, 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 lady. Not everyone's good enough to make the team. All right? You can't just start your own team because your kid ain't good enough to make the Ducks. What do you think of how they preserved kind of the Ducks? Is like now it's this an elite hockey group uh, and they, they got to cut people. It's not everybody gets a chance. Jensen? Yeah, so it, it's also funny because the the majority of the actual – plot of this show was basically the story of the little giants like it was very very similar so if you've seen the movie the little giants there's, it's pretty much the same well yeah it's a great movie also but it was um it was a lot of that and but there was so much that th- there was a lot of continuity like in the characters which i really really liked so like bombay for instance right he still has a type and it's still hockey moms. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he's been going after the moms of these players every single time we've seen him and he's still doing it, man. And the, and the new mom, Evan's mom, who's the coach, she was really good in her role. I'd never seen her before, but I heard she was from Gilmore girls and people liked her from that. And I thought she was great as, as um, like one of the main characters of the show and, and like the other coach. And you can tell season two, like Bombay is definitely going to be hitting that. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> so, so like, so yeah. So like, I mean, this is, this is all, I mean, continuity. Born Bombay is basically the same guy he was in the first movie. Like you guys have been saying. Well, I have news, folks. Um, I've seen the little giants. Have you? Wow. Victory for me. Folks. It's been forever <laughs> since I've seen it, but that was a good movie. I remember really enjoying that. That one still holds up. I watched that pretty recently. So I, I, have, I have a question. How would you compare and contrast the original cast of kids with the game change cast? Now, I'm not saying, like, you know, which one do I just mean when you're trying to basically do the same, as you guys just said, you're trying to do the same thing, right? You're trying to get over a new group of characters with the same audience, effectively. And now it's like you're always going to compare them to their equivalents, basically. Do you yeah. think they did a good job of that? Now, me as someone that watched game changers before they like actually watch the films i thought the game changer kids were super likable i thought they did a really good job would you guys agree as loyalists i don't know sp3 what are you thinking um yeah i, I would say i like the the game changer kids more than the first batch of kids like for a long time it, i needed to re-watch the films before we did this uh podcast and i think i think i said it on my birthday podcast with you guys that i liked part two more than part one now i can i can legitimately say part one is the better film but i know why i chose part two is because i like that that set of kids the teammates better than the part one kids because you had kids like carp and um the the little the little rat looking Danny Camborelli. yeah yeah <laughs> like yeah like there was a whole bunch of kids where i could just leave leave Jesse them Smollett. Out. Oh, oh my god jesse smollett yeah yeah <laughs> terry terry the forgotten yeah. brother of the hall yeah. like yeah. like yeah there was a bunch of them that i just couldn't deal with i didn't like so that's why i preferred part two more so i would say the game changers yeah they made each and every character likable in their own way like even um, you know, they created the whole storyline with the girls, you know, forming the friendship together. Then, you know, you had um, Coop, who who was like, uh, uh, he was a hermit inside all the time, you know, with the socks and everything. So <laughs> he was even more likable than, than part one Goldberg to me in a lot of ways, because you understood why he wasn't a good uh, goalie. Like he had good hands, but he just couldn't move his feet. So it was understandable, whereas Goldberg didn't even want to get hit with a puck. Like it was just like, it was ridiculous with some of the things so i i prefer game changers kids more than the part one mighty ducks oh jensen where are you at on that do you agree or disagree yeah so sp3 fantastic analysis um <laughs> so so <laughs> um so one thing we also have to keep in mind we've actually seen more on air on screen time out of the new group than we have the yeah. old group because of the 10 yes. episodes yeah so we actually have a lot more backstory into these kids um so that's one thing and then another thing like I think this leaves the door open big time the way they've set it up with the new group to where in a second season, because apparently according to, to Stephen Brill, who like created the whole thing and he's still the director and stuff, 
he's apparently reached out to all the OG Mighty Ducks, and they all want to do the show. They just couldn't do it because of COVID last year. They couldn't get into Canada. So there's all this opportunity next season to where, like, if Portman comes back, they have it set up to where, like, the two girls can be the Bash sisters instead of the Bash brothers. They have it set up to where, like, uh, Keenan said he's down to come back for an episode. Like, he can teach one of the kids the knuckle puck. Charlie can teach Evan the triple D. Um, the Dwayne Robertson can come back and show the uh, the pancake kid how to <laughs> yeah. dribble the puck on his stick and stuff. So, like, they've set it up perfect to where, like, there are underlying, like, elements of some of the original players in the new kids. So, um, so I, I do like how they've, how they've set all that up. So, um, so I, 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 I'd say that and it's funny how you said that too. D2 was always my favorite movie as a kid, but now the first movie definitely is a better movie, but my nostalgia is way more with D2, so I totally agree with you there also. Yeah. I, I'm with you guys on the D2 cast. Like that's the more memorable cast to me. Like the the first one, like you said, there's so many people it's just like, who who are you? What do you contribute to this team? What do you actually do? It's everyone's a lot more defined in d2 um and then they basically bring back that that entire group or at least pieces of that group from d3 there's really no new additions it's just the, the varsity kids and everything um so yeah d2 is the cast that i remember the most i like the d2 cast better than the game changers cast i, I will say um, yeah yeah sure. but but the original I, I do like the game changers cast better than than the d1 guys there's just so many unmemorable people that i didn't feel like contributed a whole lot to uh, the the first the first movie compared to the Game Changers cast, but you're and right also about this cast. This cast also was like super diverse, right? Yeah. Too. I mean, you had like half the team was girls, like all different backgrounds. You had the one kid who had two moms. Like they really like made sure like everyone was represented in this movie too, which I, which is different than the original as well. You mentioned uh, you know we did see the OGs, some of them come back for. Uh, the episode there but then there were some that wasn't there and then you said that it seemed like everybody wants to come back hopefully that happened because i'm not gonna lie no charlie conway and this one that that was yeah. that was a miss right. there that was a miss i don't know what happened there i know josh jackson's a big he star now in Bombay. Did you listen to the dialogue? i heard it i heard it but he's still you know hopefully Holy it's setting shit, up for Jeremy. season two you know that? <laughs> this is where the continuity comes in because part part two conway you know gives up his spot so yeah. adam banks can get back on the team he does it in a noble way then indeed three he gives he up his spot on. because because he because he's, 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 no, no, he's just petty he's just really petty he can't get over the fact that that the new coach is He's not Gordon Bombay. He's not piping his mom. He's so being he's a little bitch in D3. He's not trying to get like that bullshit defense. He's yeah. not going to get preferential treatment bullshit. anymore. He's this not, is bullshit. He's not nepotism <laughs> anymore. So in, in the game changers, he's just like, you know what? I You know, Bombay didn't care about me. I don't care about him. Even though Bombay was there for him every single time. Like in D3, he saves him from getting kicked out of the goddamn school when he <laughs> tries to skip school for a whole week because, oh no, we're not the Lady Ducks anymore. He was being a bitch in D3. Yeah, 100%. Come on, man. He was being a bitch in D3. Oh, there was a scene in that movie, by the way, that I that is so much creepier now as an adult than when we were kids. There's that one scene when, like, Charlie wakes up to an alarm and, like, Bombay is sitting in his bed. It's like, okay, Hans I don't know just died. I mean, come on. Hans just died in that <laughs> scene. Get his head back in the game. Yeah. 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 But, but, if so, but if a grown man that, like, wasn't, like, my own, even if it was my own family, just, like, I woke up and, like, they were just sitting on my bed watching me sleep, I'd be like, whoa. That's what, pretty what? much his dad, though. I mean, that's, that's yeah, more or less much. his dad. Yeah. It is. So are you guys actually saying <laughs> that you take Bombay's side in the D3 conflict? Because if so, we got problems. Well, 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 Bombay went off to be a part of uh, the Junior Goodwill game, so he all he did was go take a really good job. Yeah, what did Bombay do wrong in D3, Joseph? You just said he was like his father. Why the fuck is he getting taking this cool job and leaving him behind? The Ducks stood for something. Well, because you know? we also don't know what happened with them. See, that's another thing about the second season that's important, is because there's also been like 25 years since D3 and now. So, like, a lot could have happened between Charlie and, and Bombay after all this happened, too. So, like, that's, that's I think, and that's the other thing about them explaining Bombay that was, like, a little confusing, right? Because when they were talking about the reasons he was, like, all down and out was, you know, he said, you know, he bought tape for an underprivileged player that, you know, couldn't afford tape and he got kicked out of uh, coaching because of a recruitment violation. But he also mentions, like, that he played – you know semi-pro hockey and all this stuff but like 
based on the timeline of the movies, he would have had to have done the Goodwill games and then got back into hockey and then got re-injured because otherwise the story they're telling doesn't actually make sense. So like there has to be more to all this that we need to learn in the second season. But I do want to be honest. Um, while I had some fun with that bit, uh, Charlie is unbearable in the third film. And I think it's, <laughs> it's very, very relevant that none of us have really talked about the third film other than when we went with that bit. Like that's the, that's the weak point, right? Now, look, yeah. I understand you guys are pushing the best trilogy ever narrative. Is that I would just say, hey, guys, even Godfather 3 wasn't quite as good as the others, right? So we can we can all agree 3 is the dip, but we you come know, back fighting with the game changers. I, I will say this. I like the cast in D2, but I feel like the story is stronger in D3 than D2, in my opinion. Because the story really? in D3? Can you help? The story is Charlie's a little bitch in D3. That's yeah. the whole story. <laughs> But, but it also but it also doesn't make sense that they won the Junior Olympics and couldn't make varsity. That I that I had an issue with. Yeah, yeah. No, but you, you understood why they didn't make varsity. Yeah, but we still game. can't stop. And it's been like 10 years, and this guy still ain't learned to stop from the Goodwill Games to, to college. Like, he was too busy playing baseball in the sandlot, dude. <laughs> no, he, he was too busy uh, crawling under uh, lunch tables for the cheerleaders. <laughs> oh, and, dude, yeah, that's something they will never let in a Disney movie ever again. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. That dude's, like, creeping on chicks under their skirts at the, at the chow line. Yeah. And then he breaks oh the fourth God. wall by looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like gives him like a wink or something. Oh, so man. Do we all agree that D1 is better than D2 as a film? <laughs> now, I, film. I understand you guys haven't said but as a film, it's definitely better, right? Yeah. 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 As a film. Better, yeah. yeah. You get more feels. There's more feels to D1. <laughs> <laughs> that should be like a critical like review. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You get more feels and reviews. <laughs> Seven out of ten, closed. <laughs> let's let's talk about the the swerve at the end of uh, game changers here. So there's no state championship game. Sophie can't play. They they're just like, well, we forfeit. We're not gonna play without her. And then they they have the big matchup where it's for the ducks' name essentially. And of course, the don't bothers become the ducks. What'd you guys make of this, Jensen? Um. So the one issue I had with it is that why didn't she just sit on the bench? Like, you still could have rostered that same amount of people, and they could have still played the championship game, and she could have just been on the bench in her pads. Like, so it wouldn't have... They didn't actually have to forfeit anything, <laughs> because they wound up having that exact game afterwards without her anyways. So, yeah. like, that part, I was like, that was kind of weird. But um, Maybe, it, like wasn't, was maybe like, it wasn't in the rules that she could just sit on the bench. Hey, maybe that's a, maybe it's one of those things where I mean it is we are living in a time in, in in society where like I bet you there are rules and stuff like every kid has to play no matter yeah, what. Yeah, exactly. So, that's the um, whole reason for the don't bothers is because their kids yeah. sucked and they couldn't play. Hey, true. And 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 you know them all sticking together as a team. It was almost like what we were joking about at the top of the show where they all kind of stood up and like you know and, and announced themselves and like why they've changed because of being on the don't bothers and all this stuff. Um, and that was my big thing. What I was alluding to earlier was my big, my big hope for this series was at the end of this season, the don't bothers became the mighty ducks. Like they beat them at the end and become the mighty ducks. And my other big thing was them coming out in the OG jerseys. Like those were my two big wants out of the show. And we got that, that resolution. Like, those things happen. Bombay is coaching the Ducks again. Like, it's all is right with the world after 25 years. So that's how I felt about it. What did you think, SP3? Yeah, I, I lovely symmetry. I, li I like that analysis very, very much because I didn't, I didn't even think that I wanted that, but I did want that. Like, I didn't even tell myself I needed that, but that's exactly what I needed. I needed the Doe Brothers to become the Mighty Ducks, but I just thought, you know, they were going to beat them in the state championship, and, you know, the Dope Bothers were going to be, like, the new Mighty Ducks, but, yeah, I needed them to actually have the name and be the Mighty Ducks, because they fit the mold a lot better than this, whatever, the, the, the new, the new Hawks, the new generation Hawks, that's what they yes. basically were, the uh, Mighty Ducks of new, but, yeah, I, I say that the ending was exactly what I wanted, exactly what I needed, and it was the swerve the right way like I said earlier where I didn't expect it I thought they were just going to beat them in the state championship but this was better because now they leave room for this the second season for them to actually win the state championship and accomplish that goal yeah dude I 
I definitely woke my neighbors up that night when uh when Bombay was like was like we win, we take your name. And I like stood up. I marked out so loud in my living Jensen's room. Jensen's cheering mouth. like it's like a real game, and his team just like scored an overtime oh, game winner. Oh. Like, yeah, fucking right, docs. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing the yes chant yeah. by myself. With my windows <laughs> open so all my neighbors can hear it. Um, but uh, but no, man. Yeah, that was that was a great moment, and and I'm glad that you enjoyed the ending as well because I, I thought that was uh, I thought it was really well done how they wrapped the whole thing up, and they have also left it perfect for a second season or for d4 the movie now we know who the players are you can just do another movie and like it would make sense to do it now, I, yeah. like, I like the series because like you were mentioned earlier you you get time to flesh out some of these characters a little bit more uh learn more about them you know i get the layers going here so i like yes. that I hope, I hope it go i mean i it seems like there's gonna be a second season so that is great i like the ending yeah it's always been about the duck's name in these movies right like they they were the mm -hmm. They got the ducks from from the Duckworth instead of all their their shitty equipment that they were using. Uh, instead of Team USA, it's like, oh, now we're gonna be the USA Ducks and go after. And instead of being the the Hawks, it's like you guys aren't Hawks, you guys are Ducks. So like, it's always been about the duck name. So I did yeah. like that. Yeah, this little underdog group ended up winning the name instead of the the championship for the first season. Did I? Uh, did you guys catch also all like the back all the callbacks to like? The Ducks play in the Hendrix Hockey Arena, which is, yeah, you know, that was their sponsors in D2. Exactly. Um, the mom works for Ducksworth. Like, that's the office yeah. that she works out of. The kids yeah. go to District 5 school. So it's like there's, like, all these callbacks, too, in that way, which I, I thought were good little Easter eggs for the old fans, too. It really was. I have a bigger uh, comment to make, but I'll save that. So I'll start with this because Jeremy mentioned it. Just how offensive would it have been if Team USA rebranded to the Ducks <laughs> and the crowd but no longer would chant USA and instead decided to chant quack? quack. Yeah, but quack. we got the quack. we will, we will quack you. Like, Which is how, a, it's how many think pieces are produced <laughs> next day? How many threads? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Mighty Ducks are just cooler than Team USA, I guess, at the end of the day. I mean, those jerseys were a lot cooler than the Team USA oh, jerseys. And, and it's so funny, too, because, like, uh, like, the whole crowd, like, somehow knows. Like, they come out in the new jerseys, and the whole crowd's like, no, no way. Is this is this the Mighty Ducks? <laughs> that Team USA is the Mighty Ducks now, and they're all quacking, and it's like, yeah. how would you possibly know about this? Like, they produced like a song. Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> they produced a song in three minutes. Like, <laughs> they saw the jersey, and they're like, all right, let's remix this. We... Well, we will quack you. Yeah. It's like up on the floor. It's quack you. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, have a, I have a comment to make, and I'll now make it. I believe the Game Changers cast, I agree with the consensus earlier, that they are actually more likable or endearing, you know, than yeah. the, the original kids. However, I have an issue. Uh, and this could be controversial. I don't know, folks. And before I go any further, I want to make it clear that I do not hold any resentment for any 10-year-old actor in the world i'm merely talking about the character they portray <laughs> on mighty ducks game changes yeah. the the leader of the team whose name escapes me but you know the, the yeah yeah he's the he's the charlie equivalent here right yeah. fair to yeah. say yeah absolutely yeah. And in, in more ways than one, I mean, his mom's who Bombay is targeting. <laughs> <laughs> Jensen always just goes back to Bombay, just banging moms. <laughs> anyway, do we like him? Because I'm going to be honest, you guys don't like him. Just not all. And I have many issues with his handling of the situation in the final episode. Very insulting, I felt, the way that he put it all on poor, poor um, Sophie. Not necessary, wrong, immoral, dare I say. But I'll let you guys, the audio experts, did you like Evan? I did not like Evan. What did you think? You go first, SB3. Well, he he plays, he plays like, different. In every movie I've seen him in, like, I've seen him in The Boys, he always plays, like, this kind of, like, rebel type of kid. So this was different for him, at least. Like, he, he played the cookie-cutter type of, type of kid in this one, very much akin to Charlie. But the thing that made Charlie likable in the first film is because he was Spazway. He wasn't good at, at hockey. Like, he had the general trajectory of being complete trash to Bombay is piping my mom, so I get this final <laughs> So, so we saw that we saw that trajectory of how he improved throughout the whole entire first film. Where Evan, we we kind of get alluded that he's not very good, 
but he's still the best player on this this makeshift team. And then you know the episode where his dad comes and he he, get, he gets like a freaking hat trick and he's just a world beater. It's like I didn't see the trajectory. I, like he went from zero to a hundred real quick. Like it's not an hour and a half journey that we took with Charlie from Spazway to you know the the coaches the the coach's pet. So I think that in that way, he's trying to be Charlie, but he's really not. Yeah, I think he's Charlie in the ways of what we talked about with the coach. And then also with like just the he's definitely the leader of the team. He's definitely the captain of the team for sure. Uh, But yeah, you're totally right about that. Like Evan was already good at hockey. Charlie was not good at hockey. So, yeah, that's interesting to think about. I'm, I, I, but there's, there's definitely a lot of parallels between the two. They both look kind of similar too, right? They're like they the white kids with the dark hair, and like they kind of just look really similar as well. So, is Evan supposed to be likable? Like, uh, here's uh, my, like, <laughs> <laughs> because he's, he's kind of a little bitch in this, in this thing too, right? Like he's very what? Charlie-esque what? of like, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't make the team. Uh, he's the worst player on the Ducks, so he gets cut, and he and it becomes a whole oh my kids got to play type deal. And then he's throwing fits of like oh this team's not good. Uh, it, you know, raise your game, lead the team, buddy. Yeah. He's he's just out here throwing fits and stuff. And then it becomes like oh he was just trying to be too competitive, and everybody else just wants to have fun and stuff. And he, they finally has to learn that because the Duck way is to have fun. But then he gets a little taste of hey you might be good enough to join us and so he tries out and he's like oh i, I miss my friends shit, yeah yeah, oh my yeah. God. like i was i was so upset with him for that like i was yeah. like come on you, your mom went through all the trouble of creating this team getting the jerseys coming up with this ridiculous stupid name that i hated the whole entire <laughs> the whole entire season like the dope bothers i was just like this is just ridiculous i think that was why i was on the fence for the first couple of uh, episodes I was it is like, a stupid this name is- that's a stupid freaking name but like him him trying back out for the ducks it was like they rejected you they put you out in the trash they made your mom a spectacle made your mom viral by being the the whiny mom and you had to you know be be bullied and picked on in school and you're gonna go back to them how dumb are you like and then and then he allowed them to videotape him as well like at least if you're gonna do it (laughs) no cameras around you idiot like come on and it was always Always cameras around Yes, always cameras nowadays. <laughs> but but the, he also had just persuaded Sophie to leave the Ducks, too. It's yeah. like that, it was her spot that was open. So it's, like, even more messed up. So, it was terrible. He sucked. I'm glad we agree. Um, <laughs> yeah. I do have... Listen, I don't want to talk about wrestling here because I hate wrestling. I want to end it. But I, I, I do want to just, for the sake of the audience that's with us, have a little bit of fun. If Vince Russo, who I think would be the fitting leader for such a team, opened up tomorrow the Don't Bother Professional Wrestling Organization... Who would be the four pillars of said promotion? Now, you need to look for guys that are, you know, they fit that bill of you would willingly tell them, please, God, just don't bother. Uh, This can be based on their tweets. Isn't this the NWA? Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, now this is where I'm going to pull back. Yeah, so Tyrus. That was my, that was literally my answer. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be honest, guys. So I saw that joke. I was going to let the guys go. And then I was going to go, don't worry. Someone just told me it already exists in the NWA. Jeremy is just... <laughs> Joseph, just this, this is why we're on the same wavelength often, know. you know? But, but, but Jensen's right. He said Tyrus. <laughs> He's oh, on yeah. the ball. Tyrus. Tyrus. I mean, I wouldn't want him on my team, but, like, if you're going with, like, yeah. people that, like, I, I wouldn't bother. want. I don't, <laughs> yeah. don't bother. Uh, <laughs> uh, that'd be my number one. That'd be my pillar right now. I almost wore an NWA 70th anniversary shirt on this too. I'm glad I didn't know. Yeah, that would have been bad. That would have been bad. <laughs> you know what? Move on because that was, that was described. <laughs> Jeremy's too far. He knows where I'm going. Boy. He's been... Now look, I completely, I'm glad everyone agrees that that was bullshit when he tried to take the spot that he had opened up by effectively bullying someone into leaving a team. Not really. <laughs> but am I the only one that thought he was kind of dickish when at the end of the last episode, Sophie was just like, I'm just going to play and he does that thing where he like, Puts all of the no, we're not doing it. You know, we're not, we're not gonna let you. It's like, she, I mean, she could have gone out there for a couple of minutes if she had to go on, there, or she could have just sat on the bench. Just Jen's point out, that seemed like a, that seemed phony to me. That was a tank commander trying his best to become some sort of leader. I didn't respect that. At all. Am I being unfair here, folks? What do you think? It's I think we're being unfair. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I saw like the the continuity in this because um, you know, you you like we said, Evan is Charlie. And I think we talked about this on my birthday podcast as well. Sophie is the best player. So she's Adam Banks. Banks. 
And right. we had to have her be injury prone because that was Adam Banks's kryptonite. Yeah, yeah, he can't rotate the stick. He, I woke up and the pain was gone. He gets he gets the, the, the wrestler bump where he takes the you know the, the shot into the post, his shoulder into the post spot in the first one. By the way, so he's back out on the ice. If you watch after he gets taken away on the stretcher and then they do the little montage and stuff, you see ninety nine out there on the ice. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Oh yeah. And, oh, and by the way, like there's a lot of that kind of stuff in those movies. Like when you see those kids like like out and like when they're like recruiting them all out on the streets and they're like rollerblading throughout town. Oh yeah. If you pause it at the right times, I mean it is grown ass men. <laughs> doing all the stunts the kids. Oh, yeah, Charlie yeah, Conway yeah. gets a hell of a tan uh, in the the third one when they're you know <laughs> jumping over shit. In in part two as well yeah. when he jumps over the guy with the uh with the cement, cement mixer. Yeah. 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 The cement mixer. Yeah. I was like. I was like, he he grows like twenty <laughs> in age. Like it's like, wow, this is evolution. This is crazy. And then he's right back to to being uh Charlie. So yeah. Um. So we had to have Sophie have the injury, and they kind of like teased it the whole season with her knee and stuff. So and it was funny because like I said, Charlie gave up his spot so Adam Banks could be back on the team in part two. So Evan getting the team to rally behind and protect. Sophie, it kind of made sense, and I saw the continuity of it all. So I won't, I won't disparage him too much for that. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, but I do see Joe's point as well. Like I, I, I'm kind of in the middle on it. Like I do like Evan overall as a character, but like there are unlikable things about him for sure. So, and then speaking of like stuff in the old movies, just to throw that out there, like about like the speaking of continuity, like how. Mm -hmm. Um, there, I'm sure y'all notice this as well. Like in this, in the second movie, the guy who plays Gunnar Stahl is also the goalie in D3 yes. for the varsity. Scooter. Like, Scooter. like D3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like the, basically the same exact thing. They had, um, like the, the varsity coach in the third one is a, is a referee in the second one. Um, they have like a handful of those things where like, they just had the same the same exact actors play multiple characters throughout the trilogy and just like hoped no one would notice. So I noticed <laughs> those acting oh, fees I, are, I, you know, they're a little bit expensive. Oh, I, I love that Jensen set out. I'm sure you guys know. Well. <laughs> oh, sure this is that one of the most important that. things that y'all have ever known about. But, By the way, are you, is it speaking of referees, this referee in this ducks game is God awful. Right? Like, yeah. okay, there's only yeah. one, and so the coach is like, you know, play dirty and stuff. There's only one referee. You can't see that. They're doing this stuff, and you see the referee in the shot. They're doing it right by the puck and everything. The ref has one, just, if there's only one, keep your eye on the puck. And they're doing trips and dirty hits and stuff, and the ref's just like, I don't see any of this. This is a wrestling referee out here. There, there's a lot of that in um in D3. This is this is one of my, my main rants about D3 is how awful the, the Ducks were on defense. Like, oh, yeah. Scored- when they blow the nine-goal lead? A nine-goal yeah, lead! And, Char- and Charlie's too much of a bitch to make it into the goal in that one. <laughs> like, he totally had it. He Empty totally net. He totally got hooked. That's my that's he my did. one thing. Oh, he one hundred percent got hooked on that play. He, he totally got hooked on that play, but he was he was going nut. Like he was like he was ball just hogging. Just pass the puck. Could, yeah, just pass the puck. All you had to do was pass the puck around for like 15, 20 seconds. Like it's ridiculous. It's not like, even it's want, not even that. Like once you cross the red line, just shoot it in. Get it in deep. Like <laughs> there wasn't that yeah, much time okay. left on the clock. Just yeah, get the yeah. puck in deep. You don't have to you don't have to put it on goal. But that yeah. that's But also you that's shouldn't blow a nine goal lead. Absolutely. And that's why I said they shouldn't have made the varsity team. Even though they're gold <laughs> medalists in the junior Gilwood games, they play absolutely no defense. How do you blow a nine goal lead in one period? That's what the this coach is basketball. That's what the this coach is was trying to tell him. He's like, You gotta play two way hockey. Yes, that was the whole message of this of the third movie was defense. Because yeah. one day you might have a daughter who's having to overcome adversity. And you have to teach people like thing bad things can happen in life, so you gotta be ready to react to the bad things. Make them make the first move, Conway. That's the big <laughs> that's the big yeah. message of D three. So um so yeah, I mean, but no, you're totally right about that. And when you put it that way, SP three, that actually kind of alleviates some of my hatred that I had towards the booking of D three. Cause like I really didn't like the, I really didn't like the whole the whole them being the junior goodwill games champions and then not making the varsity, but when you actually put it that way, you got I think you got something there. So okay. yeah. 
I like I like the story more in D three over D two. Like D D two, it really has no substance. It's just about the Junior Goodwill's games, and there's a lot of things that don't make sense. Why is Iceland the the main team when Russia is already there? Russia should be, and they're an enemy of the United States. When did Iceland become this big enemy to us? And I I, I don't I don't get it. And they even make the joke that Iceland is all green and Greenland is all full of ice. So it's like if you're gonna say that to us. Why the hell is Iceland their number yeah, one? Got a lot of issues. Well, I mean, I think part of it Russia beats be... Iceland, right? That's who upsets them yeah. to give them yeah. their yeah. one loss. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but also, once again, with the continuity, if you, if you, if you, I mean, we're all on the same page here. D two, Charlie's mom's not around, so she got she married, out. didn't she? <laughs> right. Doesn't Han so, say yeah. like she got married? She got yeah, remarried. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, doesn't care about that stuff. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, and he goes after the the Iceland um uh sport. Uh, he goes after her, and then he also her. kisses the teacher. Yeah, yeah, he goes after. So he, he's like, I mean, he's in a he gets he's around. In Bombay gets around. He's just, he's a player. Yeah, yeah, he's a man. <laughs> we <laughs> we all waste many hours of our lives doing podcasts, and with that in mind. Just how offended were you at the the kind of assertion that the podcast kid in the game changer was a nerd? Because personally, I thought he was pretty fucking cool. When he had this podcast rolling at like 12 years old, I was like, damn, he seems like he's doing good. And they, they kind of treat this kid like a dork. Am I wrong, guys? Or are you also offended by this? Because I was very upset. No, we're all I dorks. Good, I thought that was a good joke. And like the first, I think it was the first episode where he's like talking about how he has more of like a podcast body. And I was like, that's actually pretty funny. That kid <laughs> His name was Nick in the show, I'm pretty sure. That yeah. that kid was actually pretty funny. There was a couple misses. There was a couple weird things. Like, when he was going after, like, the older woman who, or kind of, like, the teenage age girl that works for Bombay, that I'm sure Bombay is probably also, you know. So, but, <laughs> but, 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 so, like, but, but this kid, like, he got, like, super jealous over it, too. He got, like, really weird and, like, like defensive over, like, the, the hot dog guy or nacho guy or whatever she was dating. And I was like, this is kind of weird. But, but what I really liked about that character, too, is he had the two moms, and it wasn't even a thing that anyone ever reacted to. It was just, like, so normal within the context of the story. And he was, like, the most loved kid ever. Like, he's, like, always sitting around, like, blowing kisses to his parents. And, like, the kid who lives across the street is always, like, jealous about how much fun it looks like he's having with his family. Mm -hmm. So, like, they did a really good job there, too, of just, like, I'd never really seen that in a show before. Where they just, like, made it so, like, nonchalant and normal. Which I thought was really cool, actually. I did think that was like a very cool part of it, and one of but one of his like main character traits was jealousy. Like he right. got jealous of the of the of the girl getting with like the hot dog guy. Then he got jealous of the 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 kid that flipped the pancakes and flipped the hockey puck. Then oh. he was jealous of Evan who was going with the other podcast girl. And it's like if you had a crush on this podcast girl the whole time, why are you going after this like teenage chick? Like what's wrong with you? Go for this girl who obviously has the hots for you because y'all did a podcast together. It's like, uh, it's it's very confusing where his direction was at there. But other than that, he was probably my probably personality wise my favorite player on the Me too. Yeah, I agree. Let's, let's do that quick roundtable fashion. I'm with SP3 on that. I share favorite character in the Game Changers. Jeremy, favorite character of the Game Changer kids? Uh, playoff William Nylander. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was very confused because I don't know any of their names, so I assume that's a person. Who is that? <laughs> that that's the kid from Toronto who who sucks oh, at hockey. Oh, he looks oh, just yeah, like no. an actual NHL player named William Nylander, who is well, good. I, I liked him though. What? I liked him. Yeah, he Remember was. I felt bad for that kid. No, he was good. Like I liked him too. Uh, he looks like William Nylander, and I said playoff William Nylander because Nylander disappears in the playoffs, just like this kid can't actually play hockey. Look, the uh, the the people who like. Hardcore hockey fans, they just popped huge for that joke right there. <laughs> you guys, because you guys don't actually watch hockey, you're confused right. as shit. But the hockey fans out there watching this, like, yeah, I got that one. Let's go. Yeah, I do think that was one of the best swords in the whole series, though, was like, because you think he's going to be good by like everything you see, and then he can't skate. Yes, I really, when I saw him appear on screen, I was like, oh, okay, this is like the ringer guy who's like really yeah. good. And yeah. then. 
actually gets on the ice. Like, ah, they got me. That was good. Like, I thought for sure he was going to be the ringer kid, just like Banks, that, like, would actually wind up playing for the Ducks instead. Like, they'd, like, find out about him and, like, recruit him. And, uh, yeah, he wound up so. And then, like, he admitted it. Like, he couldn't skate. He's like, forgot to mention that I saw. (laughs) (laughs) Jensen, Um, favorite favorite game changer. character, though. I, honestly, it's probably Nick, the same kid. I thought he was the most consistently funny, um, yeah. and he was a likable guy. And all, honestly, one of the funniest parts of the whole, probably the part that I laughed at the hardest, was when they're learning how to pass and they're using their phones. And Evan looks down and sees his picture as Evan's background on his phone, <laughs> or as uh, as uh, Nick's background on his phone. And Nick just like doesn't know how to react to it. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I agree. He was fun. Um, well, the last time SP3 was on here, and this whole thing started, this absolute monster that has since emerged, that we talked about the Mighty Ducks. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> you Jeremy welcome. and SP3 began to prepare some sort of big board. Of yes. So yes. I think it would be very logical for us to combine here as the four horsemen of the Mighty Ducks. To be clear to anyone in the chat that actually likes this franchise, they should probably take my spot in that, because I understand <laughs> I am somewhat Paul Roma here. I get that, okay? But nonetheless... We should combine and put together a big board, right? A combined big board, prime for prime, pound for pound. We've got all three films. We've got the Game Changer series. Who are we taking first, guys? Come on, let's, let's try and figure this out. So what it's we Banks. Doing? It's, it's, it's got to be Adam Banks. Banks. Yeah. It's still Adam Banks. Banks. Yeah, he's, he's by far the, the Kobe Bryant. Like, I compare everybody to, you know, early 2000s Lakers, and he is <laughs> the, the Kobe. He's the Kobe. He's the guy you get in the clutch. He's the 20, 20 point scorer, and he can make free throws. So he's he's not the dominant force that Shaq is, but he can do everything so well. He is the the star player, in my opinion. Okay, so we're we're locked in there. Okay, who we got to? Ooh, I'm looking. I'm looking over like all the players here. Oh my God, have you brought the list up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you, I'll give you two names. I'll give you two names. One, okay. uh, Sophie, because I think I think we all agree yeah. Sophie's the best player in Game Changers, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yes. The other one, I think Jesse is really good. He is, yeah. and he's yeah. the he's the head of the of the uh, the Flying V. But in my opinion, of the older players, if I'm going, if I had the second pick and Adam Banks is off the board, I'm going Julie the Cat. Overrated. Uh, Overrated. No, this is my hot no, take. Bullshit. She was in net for the nine goal giving it up. She was terrible. She was terrible that game. Terrible angles. Just just did not know where her net was. Did not know where her post was. No, but but Goldberg drugged her with pastries. Exactly. Yes, yes. That was that she was she had time to recover before that game. She had time yeah, to recover yeah. before that game. She was real bored, right? She was like skating around, like singing to herself. So you got to keep your head in the game. That's not. That's, that's not true. her fault. Okay, but hang on. Man. But let's look at this both. Let's not forget that in the second movie, she has to just sit on the bench the whole time because Bombay likes Goldberg more, and he's more fun drinking a cold beer in the park. <laughs> let's not forget that. Yes, she I can't can even understand. beat Goldberg out in the second film. But no, is no, that no, the no. case, or is Bombay biased? Yeah, I think mm. Bombay is biased in the second. Yeah. film. I mean, more Goldberg than, plays well enough to get him to the championship game. He just, because she had the quicker glove, he gets put in for, for that one. No, yeah, she's Stop, overrated. Like, they, like, she's the reason that they beat Iceland, though, at the end, too. Exactly. Like, that was the big Because she had the quick the glove. Spot. Like, I get that. Yeah. But she yeah. she was also in net for the majority of blowing that nine-goal lead. Her angles well, were terrible. She could not track the play at all. I mean, the defense in front of her wasn't great. But she, her technique just, just got awful. Just, it's not good. Goldberg wasn't good either, by the way. Like, no, they, you can see them breaking down, and he's half the nets over here. They get beat on wraparound so easy. Like, just understand your opponent a little bit. You're making some good points here, Jeremy, about Julie the Cat. Because I'm also remembering, remember the one game where, like, they're getting beat down and they put Julie in, and then she just hits the two guys in the dick and gets disqualified. Yeah. That was yeah. unprofessional. Like, they needed her. They needed her. Yeah, and she let did. him down. That is true. So, yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, I will go off of that. Oh. And I'll say, yeah, either Sophie or Jesse. I think Jesse is very underrated. Because I think Jesse's the- good. Yeah, he was one of the few that was, like, still practicing hockey when they went and rounded up everyone in the second movie, too. Everyone else is, like, Gee's trying to kiss Connie and get this close, and like Goldberg's working at the deli and stuff. Jesse's out there playing street hockey. Um, I would say, I I think Fulton would be way up there too, like because he can because he can hit people, like he can be an enforcer. He is one out of five on his slap shot, so I mean like not good accuracy. You know, 
Like you take I mean, away that what? slap shot, I don't know what else he's doing well. Yeah. But he can still be an enforcer. Yeah, but yeah. Portman yeah. can be an enforcer too. But Portman doesn't have the shot like Fulton. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He, he doesn't. He doesn't have any goals at Shades all. Shades of Marcus Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Good Fake one. tough like guy that makes <laughs> never makes the big shots when you need him to. <laughs> okay, I like look, this. I think for, the two spots too high for four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm taking Jesse second and probably Sophie third. I'm cool with those. I'm uh, fair. That's fair. Okay, so we, okay, so we're top three locked in. Four. Then do we start looking at uh, Fulton? Uh, I know that you guys got really upset at the cat being suggested because of Jeremy has a lot of personal issues in that regard. I don't know. <laughs> but did she come up again? Like, where do we go for fourth? Where are we thinking? I mean, because you also have to take in mind some of these kids have like an Achilles heel in their game that's so undeniable that you just can't take them. <laughs> yeah, so, like, not ideal. <laughs> right, like you can't take Mendoza because he can't no, stop. He can't you stop. Can't take can't take Dwayne because he's a he's a showboat. Like he's only good when he's using foreign objects, like the like the bull rope. <laughs> um, I mean, so I mean, there, there's like kind of, Lester Averman is the comedy relief. Yeah, um, we're, we're picking Averman is the uh, the. <laughs> He's the he's the last pick. You guys, you pick. guys, yeah. SP3 was getting on me on the show, but Conway, especially by the end of the third film, he's playing two way hockey. What's what yeah. is wrong with Charlie Conway? I, 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 he's I, wrong I, I, could put, I could put Conway in the conversation though, toward towards the top, like because because you do have to take in mind, like we also got to figure like all those kids who didn't make it from the first movie to the second movie. A lot of those kids weren't that good, and also just for what it's worth, first movie they had. The Oreo line, which is something you would never, <laughs> ever, ever have in a Disney movie ever again, where it was the two Hall brothers. I can't remember who the, the white kid in the middle was, but that was, was like... It was Guy. Oh, it was, it was Guy. That's Guy, right. Guy and, and Connie been... are good. Like, Guy and Connie, yeah. they're, they're, consi- they're not flashy or anything. They don't always stand out, but, like, they're consistent, good players. They're, they're top six forwards, I would say. Outside, outside of Adam Banks, Guy is the best player on the first Ducks team yes. because yeah. everybody everybody wants him to, to take the goal, but... Char- uh, you know, Bombay's like, no, I'm piping Charlie's mom. He's got to make this. He's got to make this last <laughs> goal to preserve this relationship. Gotta be <laughs> he's gotta, we gotta yeah, he's also got the triple deke. You know, he's got the triple deke. Yes. Yeah. I, I think, I, you know, I mean, you could put, oh, man. Because then, like, you got, like, Russ Tyler, but his only thing is really the knuckle fuck. Like, he doesn't really bring anything else to the table. He's good at disguise, though. He, he you know, was, you know, they thought he was Goldberg. How did they get? And then switched into the pads without like that anybody was noticing. That was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, these are the kind of questions you just can't ask yourself. When you watch <laughs> yeah. Um, but then yeah. is is Evan not starting to get in the conversation? Like we're throwing a lot of names. He was the, the second best player on the game changers, right? I would, I would say I would take Charlie over Evan. I will. So I would say that. I will so say that. that. I'm with hmm. you. That's interesting. The thing with Charlie is he does give you those intangibles, right? Good mm. leader, you know. Yeah, he well, I, when he's not quitting the team, he's a great yeah. leader. We're, we're um, picking in their prime here, Jensen. You know that. You know the rules. We're picking in their prime. Oh, when he was oh, in okay. prime, he was locked yeah. in. We know where it yeah. ends up, but you know, this not it's not make this not make a four of this game. This is a serious game. Okay, yeah. we haven't picked a number prime, four yet. Prime Charlie is is D three Charlie. So yeah, I would I would probably say D three D three Charlie. <laughs> you know, personality wise, it's it's not That's too true. good. But we're just That's talking about point. hockey. We're just talking about on the ice so yeah i would put him he's he's easily top six top seven i mean we're talking end of d3 charlie like he yeah. comes around yeah. at he's least the by the, yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He's is, just he a, is he a fourth pick i'm taking i'm taking him fourth maybe gi like maybe gi he's, he's consistent throughout all three films Who is yeah gi? Gi is a, double zero a right yeah, he's yes. the one who's been watching Bombay and his moves, and he's trying to learn how to, you know, get women himself. <laughs> and, um, he, and he winds up marrying Connie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He find out game changers. He that he, was awesome. he he played the long haul. He played the <laughs> long game. He got cock blocked in D two. He got his kiss <laughs> in D one at the end of D one. He got cock blocked at the beginning of D two. D three. They kind why, of don't see. By the way, why why is Dwayne roping that dude as Connie's about to get hit? By the glass. Where was Guy to be like to save her and be like, what's what's going on here? I'm having questions I don't about know that. Who Guy is. If I've just I'm looked Guy. at pictures of Guy and <laughs> I still don't know. Who he's I'm he's very he's kind of underwhelming, but like his stats are there. Like if yeah. you pay attention, he plays a consistent a lot of goals. Yeah. Okay. Um, but 
but he was kind of more of like a background, I guess, character in comparison to a lot of these guys that we're talking about. There, but that was the other cool thing about like the continuation continuity rather in this in the game changers was like they had that stuff too where like Kenny Wu was like breadsticks, gloved shirt when they were in the thing. And it's like they were literally like lines from the old mm-hmm. movies, like Bombay, like anyone know where I can find District Five, and like they all turn around, like that was that was all stuff that I liked as well. So I just want to throw that yeah. in there too. Love, love that episode. That episode is uh, that or the finale is the best episode of Game Changers. Kenny Wu, not bad, by the way. Like excellent right. skater, like like tr- elite <laughs> skater can can pull off yeah. all those moves and everything. Uh, a yeah. little, little undersized, but he's got a lot of fight in him. A little Paul Korea in, in Kenny yeah. Wu yeah. again. So he was in those movies. He as was. Well. He was in Paul the third Korea. one. Yeah. 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 Um, he, he gets layers to him. Played for well. the Mighty Ducks, too. He's not, he's not like Tammy in uh, part one, who's just a figure skater, and they only use her like once at the end of the movie yeah. to do her little spin and get the goal. He actually has depth to his character. Yes. That's important. When, especially when we're doing a big board, it's important <laughs> we have characters with depth. Yes. Where so are we I'd at, say Charlie. Before? I'd say Charlie in four also. Okay. Just, okay. So, so I'm, yeah, I'll get outvoted and I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> concede and say Charlie at four. <laughs> But okay, that hasn't got to be pretty close. Yeah, but that. it's before who is your four going to be? So then we can figure out if that should be the five. I, I'm, I'm still with Julie the Cat, man. Julie the Cat was clutch. <laughs> oh, Jeremy really. gets really upset. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. But Julie the Cat, she got the starting job. I will say, he, I will say this about Julie the Cat. She did well in the, the uh, game against Varsity. And D3. Yes. She held her own. She made some big saves and stuff. The, the defense they actually played a little bit of defense in front of her. So so that helped as well. But I just don't know if you're counting on her when the defense to break down to like make that bit. Her rebound control, not always that great. Out of position a lot. Like, goaltending is important, man. Okay. I don't think either of these goaltenders are that good, to be honest. No, no, no. no. But the big I would say she's better. She is she's better. She is better. That doesn't feel like a big achievement, but no. I know what you're saying. Um, what about the, the like kid, the goaltender in, in Game Changers? He's pretty good. Yeah. Right? yeah, he's good. Once he got his feet under him. In his prime. Yeah. In his prime, he's good. I, look, I think one of the things is interesting, and this is going to upset everyone, and I understand why. We all admire Bombay as a leader of men, right? And by men, of course, I mean kids. We understand that. Um, Jensen admires other elements of the <laughs> which I'm, I'm not getting to here. Fair. Fair. But do we not think there's an argument that the D3 coach is like, an actual better hockey coach because like it yeah, kind yes. of seemed that way to me. <laughs> yes, because because yeah. the first the first two films it's all about gimmicks with the with the mighty ducks. Yeah, it's they always have to trick got, people. The, the, fly, the fly V, the knuckle puck. You got you got switch. It is. Days. I will. Yeah. I will say this about Bombay though, like. The soft hand stuff with the eggs, which they bring back as like the phone and everything. Those kids in the first one, they all suck. Like outside of Banks, they're, none of them are good at hockey. And he teaches them good fundamental hockey. Except for goal, he's a terrible goaltending coach. He teaches them good fundamental hockey on at least playing offense. You know, the coach in, in D3, he gets them to play defense. And I think that says a lot about him. The next film, they need a goaltending coach, all right? Like, I can't believe they have not addressed the goaltending through three films. Well, and, all, and, all, and also you can see in the third movie how Coach O'Ryan recognizes that that Goldberg skill set exceeds just inside the goal, and he makes him a defenseman as well. Yes. So that's yeah. why I think Goldberg very good is a adjustment. little more valuable. Very that's good a great point. Right, great and, point. and he's the one who scores the winning goal at the yep. end of the movie. It winds up being Goldberg. And then they have a callback to that in Game Changers, and Nick does the same thing, the whole, like, don't ever do that to me again goal. So it's like, exactly. once again, full circle. So. Absolutely. Not poetry, it rhymes. <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know if we're still doing the big board or not. I don't know what else there is. <laughs> Who are we at at five? I'm 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 not budging on on Julie the cat. Yeah, Julie's right? not so, on the board. So, so far we got we got we got. I'm games. taking Goldberg yes. over Julie the cat because he can play two positions. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Fair. yeah. That is true. That is true. I I will take Evan ahead of him though. That's I fair. would take Evan, if, especially fair. if his dad's in the okay. army. If his dad's oh, in the crowd, yeah. then, then Evan moves up the board. That's true. Yeah, and how about how Bombay and Evan's dad were just growing out, you know, just hanging Was out. Was he trying know, to bang Evan's dad? <laughs> <laughs> and that's another conversation for another time. But um, I, I think that uh, I did find it kind of 
I did find it kind of strange how much he was trying to like get to know Evan's dad. But at the same time, like if you want to know a lot about the mom, what's well, better to ask about than the dad? You know, and the guy who fucked up the relationship, sure. Yeah, but then he gave him bad advice about the stuffed animal, and that made Bombay look lame, dude. He was standing there with that stuffed animal, and she like didn't like it, and I was like, oh man, that was a, that was a miss. Bombay, you got better moves than that, bro. Exactly. Do the opposite of what this guy did. Yeah, like, he screwed it up. Guy. You can't listen to this man. All Bay's moves is showing up at their house. Like, when everyone's down and out, and, like, it just feels like they're never, like, the team's never going to get it all together, and something is wrong. All Bay shows up and knocks on the door and gets invited in, and then basically becomes their faux parent for a little while, does his thing, and then moves on to the next one. And, and, and X, is, X is what's for dinner. <laughs> That's just what's for dinner. Man, you yeah. guys are really putting like a dark undertone. <laughs> <laughs> it's also funny because if you want to go dark undertones, the only reason Bombay did any of this was community service to begin with. Yes. So like, yeah. uh, she was she was out drinking and driving, and it's funny because the same characteristics in there being in Game Changers were even at the end of it when they're like, "Oh, they don't bother me. I have to break up," and the mom's like. Yeah, but at least we have our team. We always have the Ice Palace, and Bombay is like, yeah, as long as you pay for ice time. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of objectively an asshole, isn't he? Which is interesting <laughs> element to the character. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> is Evan our five? Is that what I'm We can go yeah. Evan at five. Okay, I don't know any other characters, so you guys. <laughs> I think I'm going Guy and Connie six and seven as they okay. they bring consistency. I yeah, okay. I agree. Then. Okay, uh, we go in Goldberg because of the dual positions? Yeah, probably. Because the other thing with Goldberg is he doesn't have, like, one of these, like I said, one of these, like, Achilles heel type things. Because once you start Shitty getting this, like... Um, yeah, but better than Julie, though, as we've established. No, no, so Julie's a better goaltender than Goldberg. <laughs> They're both just very bad, though. If you use a side Lambert. I did! I, I This is what I've been saying, that Julie is better than Goldberg. <laughs> But they're both they're both not good. I would take Goldberg over her because I'd play him at defense. I think he's a great defender. I, I'd go empty net. You know what? I'm going empty net. We'll, we'll go we'll go six on five. We'll we'll just go six on five the whole time. Dude, Goldberg. I don't need a goal. How many times do we watch that guy somersault down like a big hill or something like over and over and over again? Like, yeah. I mean, the guy can take. I would, I'm and going game changers that. goalie. That's who that's who I'm going in, in net over Julian Goldberg. Two. Two. Yeah. That's, he's got that's he's true. got good reflexes and everything. He's good. I'll take him. We gotta put Fulton. We gotta put Fulton in the top ten. Yeah, sure. I think Fulton's gotta be in there somewhere. Yeah, you and he's to... in Mighty Duck from the beginning. He's the first person to actually accept the. Mighty Joseph, Duff not team. big on the Fulton here. Not a big Fulton I guy. I feel like I could take him in a Fulton. <laughs> I'm not, you know, not even grown man. He transport me to Mighty Ducks universe. If Don't somehow you? I'm playing hockey, I'm fighting Fulton. And I'm winning. I'm confident. Now look, if he sees this, God forbid, I do not want to fight you. Sir. I, I do not. I don't know how old you are, but I don't want to fight anyone. But if you can get me to a position where we're like equivalent to each other as young men playing hockey, I feel like I'm taking for them. That's all. Now, the other guy that you were talking about earlier, he kicks the shit out of me. I have no appreciation <laughs> of that. But Corbin, yeah. Corbin, man, I, can, I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I'm going to I'm gonna test him. That's what I'm going to okay. test him. Yeah. Yeah. I would, well, do I we would, outvote would, Joe, though? Do the, throw, do the rest you, of us? I would take Joe over Foggy Nelson from Daredevil, but I don't know about... Fulton Reed from the Mighty Ducks. I don't know. I don't know. Him and uh, Idle Hands also. If y'all remember that movie, Idle Hands back in the day with uh, yes. Devin Sal. Yeah. Yes. Who was also in Jessica the, Alba's in that movie, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was a really good movie. It's Seth Green, too. That was a really good one. Really was. Um, but, uh. Yeah, we're yeah. asking out. Uh, uh, you know, it's your call. <laughs> so we're getting Fulton at eight. Ahead of uh, Goldberg or Goldberg ahead of Fulton? I'd still take Fulton over Goldberg. Yeah, I'd take Fulton over Goldberg myself. But we've already taken Coop, right? So that's going to push Goldberg's value down a little bit also. If we've already I'm got using a him goal. as a, de a defenseman. Who else plays defense on these teams? Well, i take the other Bash brother before I took Goldberg. Because like, then you got Fulton and Fortman. And that's like better than having Goldberg out there. Exactly. I'd take the Bash brothers ahead of a couple of people we already named. That's on our big board. I'm taking Kenny like, Wu over both of the Bash brothers. What? Yes. Ooh. Oh, that's. I like Kenny thing. though, but I don't know. He's got he's got he's speed and like, skill. Yeah, speed and skill. You guys want these big bruisers who ain't gonna do anything for you? Give me give me the, well, the speed and skill already, guy. Oh, the problem is when Kenny Wu goes for his. Emmy Cole Caulfield. And they just like 
bash him into the ground because he's yeah, that's you know, two of them though. So many times. That's two of them though. G- give me, give me Kenny Wu over both of these guys. He's got the speed and the uh, skill. Cole I, Caulfield. I take Kenny Wu over Portman. I will give you that. All right, fine. I say Fulton then Kenny then Portman. That's okay. That, we'll lock that in. Uh, where are we at numbers? <laughs> I have no idea. I think we're up to 11 now. This at is this awkward. point, we're just reviewing every character that's ever been in the yes. podcast. So. It's actually the format we should have just done. Because now we have some sort of structure. We're actually going to talk about different things. <laughs> we're just talking about the hockey <laughs> skill of every character in, in the film. <laughs> Can we talk about the greatest scene of all time, since we're throwing out these uh, superlatives here? The okay. the tag team, whoop, there it is, scene uh, in D2. Yeah. Just... <laughs> I love that scene. Yeah. It's so good. Exactly. Hey, they reteach yeah. them how to play hockey in that. They lose their fun of the game. They got uh, Keenan making fun of all of them. Just go out there and they just go play hockey. It's great. Yeah. That was, uh, and Kenny Williams how to fight. and Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, and then Russ Tyler, of course, gets recruited onto the team based on that. Um, it- and Russ Tyler's older brother is a better coach than Gordon Bombay in the first two times. Like, they're, oh, and that was the thing. They're roasting him from the crowd. I forgot about that. Yeah. Like, you just you bad, G. Like, puts his, like, mouth up to the glass and everything. <laughs> I, I ain't even got a little brother. Um, but, yeah, that, that uh, dude, yeah, that's, that's right. He was, like, pestering them the whole movie. Then it turns out he's actually teaching them how to play at the real Team USA out on the streets. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that was awesome. That was that, I'm with you, Jeremy. That's like one of the top ten. Every time I hear that song, I immediately think of that scene of that movie. So I agree. Now I, I would just think of the Geico either. commercial. But yeah, Dude, this is why I say like D D two is the one that I like love the most is because you got that scene and then the the ducks fly together scene. I think that's like the most famous of all the scenes. And like I said, SP three New York City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> we can all announce ourselves. I'm, so, um, I'm honestly like I am. I've been on here for an hour and fifteen minutes, and that's as start as I've been. As you guys concluded, that was the best scene of all, <laughs> and I was like, "We like, named it the best trilogy." It, dude, <laughs> when you said it, I, I didn't know what scene you were talking about, and I was thinking, "There's no way he's." And then he kept describing. It, I was like, "Oh shit, he's talking about that scene." Okay, man. Let's see rules. What did you say, bro? When the wind is low and the and the and the roast is up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so when the roosters are crowing and the cows are spinning circles in the pasture. <laughs> Ducks fly together. Ducks fly together. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to think if there's a better. What's your What's on... your favorite scene in all three films? I don't know. <laughs> it certainly was the one where they play on the streets, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, it is enhanced by using "Womp." There it is. All right, that's a top tier song. Yeah, they're yeah, teaching them lessons the whole time. Yeah. I need to stress. It's a nost- I understand you guys have a nostalgia for it, but watching it, like, that was the thing that I was most like, oh, God, get it off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's funny. No. Like, I'm, I'm not even saying you guys wrong. I guarantee my Dutch fans would agree with you all 100%. But to me, watching it, like, in the last month, I was like, this scene needs to end. I, it was so hard. I sat in work, but I don't You know. get out there, take a slug of water, and do it again. Like, that's yes. great advice. Well, it's just a weird vibe. It's a <laughs> very weird vibe. <laughs> Dude, I, it's funny because I actually tried showing a friend of mine like a few years ago the Mighty Ducks trilogy who had never seen it, like, and he's my age. And he watched the first movie with me, thought it was great, and was like pumped up to see the second one, and thought the second one was just total trash. Like, Are you so, friends with so, this person anymore? You shouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, barely. Yeah. Um, yeah, this... Shouldn't yeah, be this, friends with this person. But it's one of those things where, like, I can only imagine the point of view I would have on this stuff if I did not grow up with it. I mean, I would totally, I would absolutely look at this differently. I totally understand that. Um, so I can only imagine how cringe the street hockey is if you didn't grow up thinking that was, like, the coolest thing ever. So <laughs> The thing is, we're all familiar with that. The idea of that is familiar to us because we all cover wrestling, and we all know this stuff, that if we watched it as a wrestling critic review person, we would be like, oh, my God, get this. You know, it's, I understand it. I'm not saying you guys are wrong. It just watching it. When Jeremy just said that when it got to me, the same with that, and then he keeps saying it, I'm going, oh, shit, not that one. <laughs> it's not many pennies. I don't know what my favorite scene is, Johnny. I don't know. I mean, my, the one that made me laugh most was when Team USA just rebranded to the Ducks. Because I just, <laughs> my brain immediately went to all of the responses to such a thing. They just disowned the United States of America. <laughs> In D three when they just changed the school mascot just yeah. to the yeah. ducks. I mean it's like <laughs> Imagine the Reddit Fritz, these clowns. 
<laughs> that final scene where they act like like uh, Gordon Bombay is a ghost, where Charlie is the only one that can see him in the crowd. <laughs> they, still, still, they still say, like, you hear Dwayne in the background, like, look what Bob made me! <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> what, what, what else do you guys want to say about the Mighty Ducks? That feels like the, that feels like a great conclusion. Oh we god, can't top SP 3s final show in there. That was incredible. <laughs> it's too funny. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. But yeah, I, um, I don't even know where we're at with our ranking, but. <laughs> I, any other players that we need to to review here? I feel like we've we've provided commentary on just about every player in the film, and, and the yeah. the films and the series. Oh, yeah, because none of none of the part one ones they're like bottom of the list, like Carp and Peter and yeah, those guys suck. Uh, Tam, Tammy and Tommy and Terry Hall, the Forgotten Brother. Like yeah, yeah Tammy and Tommy all... aren't bad. They're not bad. They're just the Forgotten Brother. Yes. <laughs> He is. Yeah. He got he got jumped outside somewhere. Oh right. Yeah. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. I'm trying to think if anyone else deserves a shout out. I'm kind of going through the list here. I think we covered. I mean, shout out. R.I.P. R- Hans. R.I.P. Yawn. Yeah. Um. I mean, like Hans what? dies. In the, Hans dies in the third movie, and then we find out that Yawn is who gave the ice palace to Gordon Bombay, but also gave him like a shitload of debt along with it. So I'm like, oh, kind of a dick move, Yawn. But, um. But I guess, you know, give a shout-out to those guys. Uh, shout-out to Tibbles. Remember the dude from Hendrix Hockey? That guy was pretty funny. I like um, Jensen's, like, R.I.P. Hans, R.I.P. Yawn, <laughs> fucking king of this shit, all right? Yeah, R. All R. my people locked up in cell block five, D- yeah. D5. <laughs> D5, homies, from way back when. <laughs> Someone needs to do a series on YouTube of Nick Gage just watching, like, wacky kids films and just running it wrong. Let's just see what happens. Oh my god. He'd be like, what is this pussy shit? <laughs> what is this shit? I watched, I saw him in a Chattanooga years ago, and there's a tournament called the Scenic City Invitational that they do every year, and they do something called SCI Prom afterwards, which is basically just a bunch of people getting together and just getting really weird. I mean, like, just karaoke and just getting way too drunk, and like, Dylan Hale's dad, Papa Hale's, like, wears dresses and stuff sometimes. It's, like, it's, it's a wild scene. And Nick Gage was live-tweeting from it the other year. He was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, <laughs> what am I at right now? It was so funny. That guy's the best. Oh, he rules. should be in the next season of Game <laughs> Oh, oh could you imagine? Yeah, dude. Could you oh, imagine? Bombay's like, hey, man. Like, he, he, he's, like, goes up to the team, and he's like, guys, all right. When I had my, my issues with alcohol, I met a friend of mine in jail. And this friend of mine is going to teach us about what it's like to be MDK out on the ice. <laughs> and then and then Nick Gage is here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it's, like, God, it's, it's like a real mix of Little Giants. And he's like, he, they're going to teach you intimidation. Yes. The intimidation yeah. of Nick Gage. <laughs> yes. That's a whole other one. If y'all want to have us back on here uh, to, to break down uh, any break of these. Break down film on Little like, Giants. Little Giants, <laughs> Sam, not any of these. I mean, I've got a few going with uh, Sam Roberts that's been going on for years because he claims, this idiot, he claims Fair. that that the Big Green is better than Little Big League. And I'm like, no, Little Big League is better than the Big Green. And he just won't accept it. So I don't even know what the that's Big a- Green is. It was a it was a soccer movie about. Yeah. It was always it, it was they were trying to like make sports franchises out of the fat redhead from the Sandlot. Remember he was like going uh, to like. Oh okay and, okay yeah. yeah I know yeah. I know a film you're talking about now. It, yeah right. I haven't seen that probably since it came out. Um, uh, yeah I, I would go with Rookie of the Year over all of those. I well no like I would too but like specifically he talked a lot of shit one time about Little Big League and I was like bro like if you're ranking the Big Green over Little Big League like. Like, that movie was about a kid who gets, like, deported from the team. Like, this was a weird story for kids. Like, yeah. Like, that was... Anyways, Sam Roberts, if you ever happen to watch this, the Big Green is not as good as Little Big League. What's the baseball one where the kid coaches the team? Like, he's granddad. Yes, Little Big League. Yeah, that's that's Little Big League. Good. Coaches the twin. Yeah. 
Rookie of the Year is the one where the kid gets like a special pitcher. powers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where he breaks, yeah, his, he breaks his arm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I was very confused then. Okay, I understand now, folks. I like, will review these films that. another time. <laughs> like, launches a launches a rope from like the outfield to the catcher from the stands, and like yeah. gets signed to the Cubs immediately. Yes. As a kid. And yeah. Gary Busey is piping his mom. <laughs> yeah, you know, see, this is, this is another theme of these kids, right? Like, it isn't just about the kids; it's about the parents, you know, doing what they got to do also. So, <laughs> doing what they got to do, doing what they got to do. Indeed, man, indeed. And if there's one thing you take from this show, I'll make it that. Okay, not just about the kids; the parents they got to do what they got to do. That's all we're gonna say. Remember that. And TJ, we're educating here. <laughs> I hope this is educational for everybody in the chat today. Um, we had a consistent like 20 to 30 people in here, so I mean, I'm sure y'all really enjoyed this. If, if you if you want more of this kind of talk, I would make your voices heard. If you want a second <laughs> season of Game Changers, I'd be hashtagging that. We should all be hashtagging like bring back the Mighty Ducks or something. Maybe like the longest <laughs> hashtag ever. I'll put up a hashtag that's like bring back the Mighty Ducks Game Changers for a second season. And it'll just be like this giant, long, obnoxious hashtag. And we're all going to get on that and we're going to get this second season. So. I'm with it. I, I'm so down with this campaign. I will be vice president of this campaign with Steven. You know what, man? The little bit that I've known you so far, I knew you'd be down, and I really appreciate that. It's the funniest shit we've ever done. Like, oh. Steven Jensen, let the people know where they can find you. <laughs> Twitter, fight talk underscore, F I G H T T A L K underscore. If you want to watch some uh, some good professional wrestling, check out independentwrestling.tv or iwtv.live and use code FIGHTTALK, F-I-G-H-T, T-L-K, all is one board with no spaces, and you can watch iwtv.live or independentwrestling.tv, and that helps me and my podcast out if you do that. And as far as for Fightful, um, Fightful Select Weekend or Podcast every Sunday, talking to indies and a whole bunch of other stuff. And this Saturday, me and Sean Ross Sapp will be doing the UFC 263 Watch Along on the Fightful YouTube channel. So that's where you'll find me at. I might jump on that depending on how my Saturday goes. Oh yeah, dude! You're I, obviously you're welcome. So that'd be that'd be fun. It could be. We're a... gonna start. We're gonna start with the Nate Diaz Leon Edwards fight. So we're gonna do the last three fights. Okay. Uh, much long. So yeah, Saturday could be could be a day. Uh, so I'll, I'll let you know. SP three. Yes, yeah, so you can find me at True Heel SP three. You can follow my crew, True Heel Heat, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going live on Friday for Dark Side of the Ring Dynamite Kid review. We also got True Heel Heat one twenty nine on Saturday, where we're gonna break down preview. Uh, take over in your house. You can also see me on Powered 4 TV tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, as well as Wrestling Daily with Alex McCarthy at 3 p.m. Eastern Time with special guest Luke Gallows. So that's going to be a bunch of fun. And you can see me on Sports Keto Wrestling YouTube channel on Friday following SmackDown with my good brother, Grandpa Dutch Mantel. So check me out nice. over there. And thank you guys so much. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, and I'm so so glad that I was able to do it with two of my favorite people, Joe and Jeremy, and now my brother from another mother, uh, Stephen. Here we brother brothers from uh, Bombay piping the hockey. <laughs> yeah, uh, Stephen Jensen. And remember, folks, look what Bombay did. Look what Bombay did. <laughs> tell yes. tell Alex McCarthy I said fuck off. Uh, Joseph, do you have anything to plug? Usually at this time, I would just say, you know, support the, the two gentlemen that have joined us today. But they actually have stuff going on and they know what to promote. So I know that would be a waste of time. They actually have, like, interest. You know, they, they did it themselves. They promoted themselves. So, um, not really. I think I'm going to try and end professional wrestling at some point this week. I've decided I've had enough of it. So if you along that journey, I, at Joe Holbert on the Twitter. Um, not a lot of positivity over there right now, guys. going to be honest here. Yeah, a lot of doom, a lot of gloom. Uh, if one more person DMs me that Samoa Joe is going to work for Impact Wrestling, I will fucking fight someone. <laughs> I will get. I will take my video, my phone here, and video me fighting someone that does not even know who Samoa Joe is. In rage, please stop doing this. This was originally a joke trick. I now get these regularly. Samoa Joe is going to No, he's not. Leave me alone. I don't want this. Please stop. Anyway, that's my plugs. Carry on, Jeremy. Get out of here. Joseph, you said one more DM. 
Oh, listen. <laughs> this, is, this, is not, this is not the time, please. It's a real thing. I have not fought the NWA, JJ. <laughs> but I, but I, it feels within reach, I've got to be honest. That's the big announcement on NWA Power tonight. We've we've purchased this thing. Billy's going to come out. We're going to be on Power. He's going to hand the keys over the, to the company to us. It's just a bunch of janitorial keys. That's, that's all it, it is. It cannot get any worse, right? Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, that ending, that ending of uh, that pay-per-view was just so bad. Such a waste of time. So, yeah. Not ideal. Not ideal that the NWA is wasting people's time. They actually wouldn't give them their time at this point. It's not ideal, but whatever. I gotta it's watch. the one show of the weekender that's like a literal chore for me. That's like the one that I'm uh, like, all right. Of all the other, I, I look forward to watching everything else. Then I'm like, all right, NWA time. Like, let's just, and then I look at Jeremy's um review or his, his coverage and it's just like, so-and-so beat so-and-so, so-and-so beat so-and-so. And I'm just like, I'm going to actually have to watch this whole thing, aren't I? I, I can't horrible. even, I can't even go by just the, <laughs> so. I got a, an hour and a half season premiere. Get it, get excited, everybody. Um, let's see. We'll be back on Twitch Thursday, Thursday after our distraction show, uh, and then Thursday night Impact co stream. Jensen's there every week. I might be there this week. Um, no, I will not be there this week. And I just remembered what's on. What else is on on Thursday? Um, and then we'll. I don't know. We'll be on Twitch at some point. You guys know where to find us. Uh, in the gym every day, getting shots up. Who can we raid? Let's see here. Uh, Stephen Larson. Sm- they hate wrestling. Smo Joe, if you're watching, please respond to my DM request. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Larson. They hate wrestling. We'll send you guys over there. I guess I, it says they're doing going in raw. I thought they quit watching that show. What are they actually reviewing? Cowards. Yeah. They do it. They do it the day after now. They don't do it. They don't do it right after. The show. Here, Death they, to the World Wrestling Federation. Make it stop now. And I bet you anything they're doing that so they can just straight up just like skip through all the bullshit and just watch yes. it real quick the next day and then jump on. Yeah. Like, they won't have much to review I, then because I, there's I watch the stuff. NBA playoffs and then and then uh in the morning I watch Raw with no commercials and skip through the crap. Just, which made me skip through the final segment today. I, I just there don't watch Raw. I just don't watch it. I'm in the same boat as you, Jeremy. I, I just it was just unavoidable. All the stuff I saw on Twitter this morning, I was like, I gotta see what this doll. Yeah, I watched the final about. segment. And then I was like, was oh it. my god, that was it. Yeah, Joseph, you want to talk about this final segment? <laughs> no, I don't want to okay. talk about it. Please, no, no, no let's just get out of here. Quack, 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 qu